I max on the list. I go I am plugging on this. And today we will be doing the bolt we will be doing something in multi variable calculus. So yes we're still doing the derivative, but instead of one variable we're doing two variables. Let's get started. So we have the equation z equals e to the power of xy and we want to do the derivative of this, but like with multi variables. So the first one we will have partial f with respect to x, that's how we would say it. And basically z equals e to the power of xy. It can also be written as f of xy equals e to the power of xy. So we have our f bit here and we have e to the power of xy. So since we have partial x here, that means we only want to focus about the x part and we leave all the other variables as a constant. So that means if you thought of y as an actual, con um, as a actual constant, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc, etc, it's basically doing the derivative of that. So then if you did using the e powers, you'd still have e to the power of x1. But since y is a constant, we have to do times the derivative of x, y. And since y is a constant, we multiply by y. So that would be partial f with, with respect to x. Now let's go to the one max anomalous rate. So he wants me to do partial f with respect to y. Like I said, we have our f function and this time, instead of making y the constant, we make x the constant because y is our main subject here, it even says it in bold. So, to do the derivative of this one, with respect to y, it would be e to the power of xy oh, times, since we have y here, x is the constant, so times the derivative of xy which would basically be times in it by x, since x is the constant. So that's for that. Second derivative. So now we're going to the second derivative, because like the derivatives, we have second derivatives, third derivative, derivatives and they are hundred derivatives exactly eventually. exactly maximum it will that goes up to unlimited derivative and it keeps on going unlimitedly there's no number for it to finish i know just keep going and going and going yeah, and going that's going what, yeah i just said that like the very hungry caterpillar keeps eating and eating yeah that's why i said I'll how can we do the, the notation Notation. Let's break it down. Yes. You must break it down first. <laughs> like with the derivative, we have dy dx. If we wanted to do the second derivative of this, we would do d squared y with respect to dx squared. Right? So the same can apply here with the curly d's as well. So the first one, the obvious one, curly d, curly d, ha ha, I got all of my guys, oh, so we got an extra, and then we'll do squared f over curly d, x squared. So we're still focusing on x, and we want to take it from the original one here, because it's dx squared. And since it has relation to x, it should be to be x. So uh, basically, I I won't, I you just do the multivariable derivative for this one again. So since we have x, that usually that means that we're treating what every y as a constant. We don't have to do the product rule here because y is a constant. We already know the derivative of e to the power of x 
that's why with the heat in the back front, time is right. So then y times y times e to the power of x y. y times y we can then become y squared times e to the power of x y. Now here comes the slightly more complicated one, shall we say. It's the one that gets people the most, but also has very special meaning. Here we go. E squared f over dx squared comes here. No, dx squared, just dx. And it's supposed to be curly. Sorry, just bear with me. What could go here? What is the only other thing we have, Maximilian? We have curly dx, curly df. What is the third thing we have, Maximilian? Curly dy. Exactly. Yes. Curly dy. This is the new derivative we have to do. It look made up tricky. Trust me, it's a piece of cake. Trust me, and it's a piece of cake. We have dx squared originally right. here, okay. and now we have dy here. Curly dy. This should mean that we only focus about y and we get x 